Hey everybody, welcome to Volvara. This project is going to require a much lengthier introduction than just those couple of cinematic shots and a few words, but in a nutshell, this project is going to be a steampunk floating island castle coaster, which is a very weird concept and I would say the project in general is extremely weird and hard to introduce because it's something that I wasn't really planning to make up until this point and it was definitely not something that I felt obligated to make a series out of, especially since there are already so many things that I sort of feel the need to work on at this point. The thing is, I just felt like I wanted to make this thing, not necessarily because I wanted to make videos of it, but just because I wanted to mess with this idea which has been stuck in my mind for a couple of months now. And I realized that I have made a steampunk coaster before, and I've made quite a few castles in this game, but I haven't made something which is as ridiculous and outlandish and over the top as I'm hoping to make this thing. Because honestly, a floating steampunk castle island is something that belongs more in strange concept arts that never see the light of day than any kind of theme park game elements. And that's precisely kind of why I want to try it. Now one of the things that kind of makes me wonder if it's really that great of an idea to start this series is that it's going to be ridiculously into detail which is either gonna crash and fill or just be uh, extremely polarizing at best since it's gonna take an enormous amount of work to actually get this to work. Um, so this episode, for instance, has taken about five to six hours counting the time-lapse and the preparation. I have cut way more in this time-lapse than I normally would, uh, removing many pieces which you've probably already seen that I was cutting around here and there uh, to skip certain uh, things that were built just because the skill that this is built on uh, with this kind of level of detail is perhaps too time consuming even for the time lapses and I wanted to at least make sure that I get something done in each and every episode which is why we'll be skipping ahead quite a bit. But anyway, it's gonna be a crazy island with a castle with a very steampunk style to it. I want to be very careful with saying steampunk here since the introduction as much as I wanted to go for the cliche of having the camera go through the cogs and gears of some kind of machinery that'll be inside of this enormous uh, thing. It's something that is almost so stereotypical and not really representative of steampunk that I want to watch out for that kind of idea and almost say that it's very steampunk inspired because I don't want to listen to any specific style or anything with this project. I just want to have pretty much a, um, well, a free empty template to start doing crazy ridiculous things on and um, experiment in a sense that I haven't really done so far. It's going to be similar in using elements to create things that weren't really there before, but with all of the extremely small pieces that have been added in the recent edition of the game, I wanted to go much further with this than I have done so far. Which to actually get to what I'm building at this point is probably most visible in what I'm doing right here. I wanted to make the roof of the uh, top spire of what is going to be the tallest tower in the entire complex. And I didn't want to take one of the in-game roofs, which would have been the pretty easy way. And I also didn't want to make a custom roof, which is just a simple roof. And instead, uh, what I went for is almost kind of an Eiffel Tower thing. Actually, it's, it's a lot like an Eiffel Tower. I, I just called it the Eiffel Tower roof. It just sort of cut off the four legs and I have a very small section down there, but that aside, it is pretty much just the iron works of many Victorian uh, pillars or bridge arches or the Eiffel Tower. So it's got that open work uh, cast iron in there. At least that's what I figure it would be in the shape of a very steep spire and especially in some of the details like having the uh, the golden elements and uh, the, the very small peaks of the spires, I wanted to experiment a bit with taking these very small pieces, putting them all together in things that aren't really as recognizable as in-game assets to just add to the unique look of the uh, entire build and um, turn that into all of the details. And the same kind of goes for the walls that I'm doing right here, since I didn't want to take one of the in-game walls and instead I figured uh, the back of this weird scenery item sort of looks like a sandstone wall and especially if you put them over each other and overlap them, overlap them a bit you get this idea that there are very large sandstone bricks that make up this wall instead of just 
the empty flat back pieces of an item which you're not even supposed to show. And in this case I kind of like the look, it's a bit more gritty, it's a bit more textured and less clean than many of the looks in the game and um, I do want this to look like quite a, uh, quite a dirty, almost horror, sort of industrial uh, steampunk look. It's not gonna be all that clean. I actually happened to uh, watch a lot of cyberpunk stuff recently, so there's a bit of inspiration from that as well with having all sorts of different cables and uh, dirty pipes leading everywhere, but that's completely beside the point. Basically, I just wanted to make everything in this project as unrecognizable from the original elements as I could. And skipping ahead a little bit here, this is going to be the uh, sort of middle part of the tower. Just for force perspective reasons, I wanted to make the bottom part of the tower a little bit thicker than the top part. And uh, to actually get that transition to work out right, I had to find some way to have a uh, division between the top and the bottom part. So the, uh, the function of that is pretty much going to be this weird little uh, thing with all of the decorations, all of the... Uh, almost freezes kind of things that sort of split up the building into two parts. I'll have a bunch of windows and arches in here. It's not going to be anything too special, but a good way to uh, just divide the building into two sections and you can kind of notice that it is these two sections that it gives the the tower a long slender um, but still slightly thicker feeling on the bottom of the tower. And in that sense, I was quite happy with how this turned out. There's a bit of experimentation over here as well with the sci-fi pieces. I wasn't really very used to these pieces. I love the sci-fi theme, I've just done it quite a lot without the theme, so I wanted to avoid that for a little bit. Uh, but especially to get the more technological uh, look and the more steel, almost cyberpunk look into this build, I wanted to use some of the sci-fi pieces for some details, so long as they could actually have the same colors as the rest of the building and not stick out too much. And for things like these pillars, but also any kind of random machinery or details um, around the building, there is also some other sci-fi pieces in there already. I think it works out quite well to give it that almost otherworldly fantasy feeling that it's not just simple uh, Victorian, but it's, it's really quite ridiculous. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I wanted to add this weird little turret on the side of the tower, which actually turned into one of my favorite things in the entire build. It was not very time consuming, it's one of the one of the simplest things actually. I just love how it turned out, it's it's very much like the turrets that you'd see on the uh, Disneyland castle on the side of the towers or any kind of castle for that matter. But it's a bit more like uh, almost a rocket ship. It's got that weird shape to it and it's just suspended from the side of the building in a sort of illogical fantasy kind of sense that I would see it as. So. Um, it's just one large box with a bunch of decorations on the top and bottom of it. That's really what it comes down to. So I wanted to mix all of these different wooden pieces and different uh, like fountain pieces that you have. Whatever really works to intersect into each other up to the point where they almost become unrecognizable and sort of just blend in with each other to create all of these different textures and shapes is what I ended up using for this little tower. I actually kept the middle quite simple. Just put a window over that and a few very simple decorations and that pretty much finishes that up. It's mostly in the bottom and the top of the tower that I wanted to put all of the decorations and uh, give it that distinctly weird turret-like look to it. Which is not something that you would really see in real life, but I'm quite happy with how it turned out. And finally the bottom part kind of comes out almost like, um, oh, what do you call it again? Anyway, one of the engines of a, of a rocket, almost. Um, and just suspending that with a couple of simple beams. For a lot of these beams, I end up using wood, even though I kind of would love to have them look more metal, just because the wooden pieces are uh, smallest. The same goes for this roof over here, by the way, which is also one of my favorite things in this part of the build. What I wanted to do here was not really use the in-game roof since we've seen that a lot, it's going to be extremely recognizable and um, I wanted something that's a bit more mysterious and less recognizable than just using an in-game item. Now what I did figure is that this item would actually be very handy to give a guideline on what to make a custom roof look like. So I ended up taking sort of the profile of that and drawing a spiral on it 
and filling in a spiral roof with a uh, square footprint on the side where I left that. Now I did skip quite a bit of this since this turned out to be one of the most boring things to build ever, just rotating every wooden piece until it fits just snugly between those two wooden posts that spiral toward the middle. Um, but it actually worked out pretty well. I didn't even practice this beforehand, it was just YOLO, let's try it and see where it ends up. And um, in the end, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It does have uh, the steampunky feeling in the colors of it, but it also has that strange technological and completely useless decoration to it. So that pretty much finishes up the spiral roof, which is going to be sort of the main tower on the side of the main tower. I'm probably not going to be adding any more turrets or towers on the side here as much as I would love to add one more tower since there's going to be a bunch of other decorations. This is not going to be simply a Disney castle. I do want this entire build to look a bit weirder and uh, ridiculous than that. Besides, I've already built plenty of castles, so I'm going to go into uh, more technological stuff and ridiculous stuff later on that aren't necessarily buildings. But just to shape out what is just going to be the most visual part of the entire uh, building, I wanted to have this tower on the side to make the uh, the tower itself not look as boring and simple anymore. And again, it's just a lot of fun to take the different items and put them into each other and just see how it looks every time. I didn't really have any kind of strict way that I wanted this to look beforehand, which is what I usually do. Usually I would actually um, recommend to have an idea of what you want to go for before you build it because it saves a lot of time. It's one of the best ways to come up with unique and creative uses of certain elements. Uh, but in this case I ended up doing the, the exact opposite, which I suppose works because you're doing something outlandish and something that would never be built in real life and that's supposed to be as um, well over the top as you can make it. So really there are no rules to this. It's just a lot of putting different items into each other that you feel could kind of work and then look at it and either go, yes, that's okay, I'll keep it. Or go, no, that's terrible, I'm gonna have to remove that. And usually it's gonna be terrible when you have to remove it, but eventually you get those like weird nuggets of amazingness where it turns out that something works really well. Like I actually felt with many of the details of putting uh, this building right here together, which are many items that I never really put together in this way. Um, but eventually it worked out very well, like the sign on the back that gives those ironwork details on the walls, uh, the different items that make up the pillars of this building, and especially also the items that make up the cornices. Some of them aren't even really cornice pieces that are supposed to be used this way, but there are so many things that you can just slap onto a cornice and make into a part of the cornice, and it's a lot of fun to mess with that kind of thing. Now what I also wanted to do is add some balconies on the side of the tower because so far the tower is just one straight square uh, footprint tower which if you don't add anything on the side I think it's just gonna look very boring just like a blocky building so I wanted to have some things that really jut out from the uh, from the center of the building and make it a bit more interesting than just one large pillar of rectangles um, so one thing that kind of gives a bit of body to it is having this large door which is an excuse to add a huge balcony in front of it with all the decorations and that should hopefully even out the balance of the tower a little bit more. It also has these pretty sweet lamps and I am still not actually sure how those lamp like items, they're, they're down in the window section there are those couple of like hanger items and I am still not actually sure how these hangers are supposed to be used uh, but they can be used in so many different ways to hang lanterns that it's it's pretty funny. I think every every way that you can use them or every direction that you can place them in works out pretty fine. Uh, so that's that. And I just copied that around to the other side because I wasn't going to spend a ridiculous amount of time on everything. And now one of the things that I wanted to do before I moved on to making the coaster, which is going to run around this in the future and doing a bit of terraforming, is experimenting a bit with the details that I wanted to put on the side of this building. So far the, the steampunk is really just in the decorations that are very Victorian inspired and have a, well, stereotypical steampunk color scheme to it. But I didn't really feature any of the pipes or anything like that yet. So this was nice experimentation time to mess with the different pipes in the game. There are a whole bunch of them in a sense that there are only two pipes that are strictly pipes, but some of these 
Uh, primitive art pieces like this one can actually be used very well to uh, put pipes together. Some of the chimneys can actually act as black iron pipes as I'm doing over here as well. And even if you really need to, you can use some wooden posts or metal items to make some pipes that come out of the sides of walls. It might not always be the most realistic thing, but it's definitely something that uh, can work. Especially with how small some of the, the pillar pieces and primitive pieces are, you can definitely create the illusion of whatever something is just by putting it together in the right context. Now, not everything in this series is going to be this meticulously detailed or individually placed. I would actually say a lot of these parts that I'm placing right now, I would love to in the future just copy around and copy paste to other buildings because honestly, there is no reason to completely remake and recolor all of these pipes when you can just reuse your old ones. So further on in the series, I'm really hoping to have a pretty fair amount of blueprints and already made uh, pieces of buildings that I could just copy around and use as much as I can because it's definitely that function in Planet Coaster which can save a lot of time if you sort of plan your builds uh, well enough and actually save all that stuff. Now for a very short intermezzo almost of building the coaster itself, I do have to say very quickly this is not going to be mostly about the coaster. The coaster is an Intamin uh, mega coaster. But it's not really all that relevant in this case. The coaster is more or less just going to be something that decorates the entire build and something to explore the build in, uh, but it's not going to be a realistic coaster at all. Obviously we're on an island, so that's already uh, minus one point for realism, but also it's not going to be an actual intimate based coaster. I'll make it safe for sure and hopefully as fun as a layout as I can with um, everything that I would personally love in a coaster layout and perhaps some intimate stuff like having all of the different S-Bends and zigzag parts in there but still it's not going to be based off of any real hyper coaster or mega lights like the type should probably be so um, the coaster is going to be pretty strange as well it's not not something that I'm really gonna put too much focus in just wanted, uh, wanted to put that out there and a bit of terraforming which is very very rough not just in the literal sense but also um, because I'm not really going to detail this too much until it's done so for now it's just going to be a base that I know where everything is going to be and how the build is going to look with all the buildings on top of it um, but I'm hoping to do everything in this build like alongside each other so I'll be doing the terraforming alongside making the buildings on top of it as well as alongside the coaster layouts. I'm not going to make the coaster layout and finish that before I go into the scenery, uh, but I just want to make the coaster layout for the parts of scenery that I am making at that point as well. Um, which is a strange way of working, and also it's why I can't really show the POV yet, because there's not really much to show. There are so many things that should be happening in the coaster at some point in the future, but it's just the very start that I needed to get done in order to actually get an idea of how the coaster is going to run through uh, this area with the tower here. So yeah, that's that's it's just going to be very scenery focused. And um, here I just wanted to very quickly come back to the tower on the side here. I didn't actually finish the uh, parts underneath this, but I wanted to get that done just to get an idea of how this tower would look in the future. It's going to be quite a bit more busy than this since I will have some towers on the side that might carry the uh, blades that are gonna keep this entire island up in the air. Yeah, that aside, it's not gonna... There's not gonna be anything attached to this tower in a strict sense. I'll have some lower parts of the building where it's a bit more bulky. But there are just gonna be a lot of towers and domes around the entire elements. So, uh, around the entire island. So that's something to uh, kind of see it in in the future, which is why the tower in a sense also looks a little bit off and a little bit weird at this point in time because it's just alone and it's supposed to be in this enormous sea of uh, like steampunk towers and domes and everything. Now finally I wanted to show a glimpse of the cog which decorates the main tower and it's the first supernatural element which hopefully brings the entire castle out of the simple castle category and into something a lot more fantastical. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.